woman with the issue of blood. She had spent all she had. But she still knew that something had to change. When the the worship service began tonight, it was like some of you were pulling at the Spirit. Saying, I know the Spirit is moving at POLR. And if you've been here in the previous Sundays and Mondays, you know without a doubt the Holy Ghost glory is going to move in this house before we turn the lights out. It's just a matter of when. It's going to happen tonight. But that day, that woman said, I don't have any money left, but I've still got an issue. She said, hey, Jesus is coming this way. I've got to begin to move toward him. This may be my chance. I don't know who you are. I don't know what your circumstances are, whether they be financial, whether they be healing for your body or for someone else's body. There's several needs that I do know of in the house. But what I can guarantee you is they begin to sing that chorus again. If you will make an effort forward, you will make an effort in a different direction. I promise you, God is fighting for you. And she reached and touched the hem of his garment. God is going to show his miraculous power in this house. But he wants to know, don't just desire it of me. Push forward and get a hold of it. Push forward and reach for it. Push forward and touch it. Push forward and say, it's mine. Somebody, it's been a while since you danced. It's been a while since you leaped. Maybe it's been a while since you took a lap. I'm telling you, God wants to lose somebody in the Holy Ghost. God wants to do the miraculous in this house. She had an issue for 12 years, but in one swell touch of the hem of his garment, she was healed. Sing it, worship team. Restore is here right now. 
Amen. If they'll put the needs on the screen, we'll begin to pray for those. If you have a need in your body, the one touching you has the gift of faith and the Holy Spirit operating in them. Believe God for a miracle in this house. Come on, God is going to do a miraculous. There is no reason for any unanswered questions. There's no circumstance that God can't answer. He's fighting for us and we're pressing for an answer. I'm pressing till I touch the hem of his garment. I'm pressing till I touch him. I'm pressing till I touch him. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every need on the screen. Barbara Mueller. In the name of Jesus. Mike Jones. In the name of Jesus. Mr. Dong. In the name of Jesus. Tom Copeland. In the name of Jesus. Newman. In the name of Jesus. The block clock. In the name of Jesus. Come on. Find somebody to pray with. Let's touch Jesus. Let's touch Jesus. Let the glory of God inhabit where you're standing. Worship him until it comes down. Worship him until everything else around you is engulfed with his presence. God is fighting for us, pushing back the darkness, lighting up the kingdom, like the young and shaking. Come on, I see some moms praying. I see some dads praying. I, I claim some families in the name of Jesus, son. There's some family situations that we don't even know of, uh, but I speak to family situations in the Holy Ghost. Uh, come under the order of the Word of God. Uh, come under the order of the name Jesus. Uh, do not worry. Do not concern yourself. Uh, for the Lord says, I see all and I know all. And their hands, my hand is upon them. Their path is controlled by me. Their path is controlled by me. The Lord says every time they pick up their feet, I know where they put it down. I know where they lay their head to sleep at night. I know where they're at because you cover them in prayer. In the name of Jesus, give the Lord a shout of praise. Give the Lord a shout of praise. He call your shanda yarara baha. He ayarara la boyo shoto yarara baha. He ayoshuto. Hayarara baha. There is liberty. There is victory. There is power in this house. Hallelujah. I believe tonight there is the kind of power in this house that caused Peter to see him walking on the water and say, Lord, bid me come. And the Lord just simply said, come. And Peter stepped out of the boat. Ha! Huh. I believe there's that kind of power to, deny, to defy the natural of this world. To deny the natural of this world. That's the kind of power that is resident in this building tonight. I don't know what kind of circumstances you walked in here with, but the kind of glory and the kind of power that is in the name of Jesus is the kind that you can step out on the water of uncertainty and say, I shall walk on the top. I shall be the head and not the tail. I shall be the one that is declared victorious. I'm telling you, some of you have circumstances that God is saying, come unto me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. There is a power in this house tonight for no one to leave hungry, for no one to leave questioning. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Thank you, PLR worship team. I believe tonight we have broken a barrier. I speak it with confidence. We have broken a barrier. We're so honored to have Brother Greg Albritton back with us. And through his preaching and through your worship, we have pressed through a barrier. This is our core people on Monday nights. Amen. If you're a guest with us tonight, God bless you. But you have stepped into an apostolic service where if they're dead, they're going to get up. If they're lame, they're going to walk. If their limb is crooked, it's going to be straightened. If their heart is out of rhythm, it's going to get in rhythm. I believe, hey, I'm telling you, this is the kind of atmosphere where people go home and write in their journals and they make books about this is the kind of revival ball that is beginning to roll uh, at POLR. Amen. Amen. If you just want to sit back and take photos and be a part of, and take photos and be a part of the show, that's fine. I don't want to just take photos. I want to be in the photo. I want to be a part of what God's doing. 
I'm ready to see the miraculous. Because let me tell you something. It's going to be noised abroad of what's going to begin to happen. People are going to say, I got to stop at that place. I believe we're on the precipice of a great numerical revival within this core. People, ha. Huh? There's an increase coming. That's right, Pastor Byers. There's an increase coming. You won't be able to sit in here on a Monday night. It'll be a standing room only. Hallelujah. It'll be a standing room only. And you say, Brother Books, how are you so sure? I'm so sure by the boldness of the Holy Ghost uh, that I feel in this place. Uh, and you know why? Because our world is thirsty. Our world is hungry. And if you have something for them to drink and something for them to eat, uh, they will find it. And it's here. I promise you what's here is authentic. It's not drawn up by man, but it's prayed down from heaven. It's real. It's real. God is in this house. Ha. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We got a man of God here, but I'm telling you, I don't know what all is going to take place in this night when brother, tonight when Brother Greg Albritton gets the microphone. You just get ready. If you have a need, don't leave tonight with your need. Know that God's going to take care of it. Amen. Reach around. Hug one another's neck if it's appropriate. We're so glad to have you in the house of God with us. Thank you, worship team, musicians. Amen. Good to see Brother Daniel back on the keys. Amen. So glad to have our musicians and our singers. Amen. Worshiping and playing for us, leading us into the presence of God. Thank you, PLR core body, for your worship. Hallelujah. I'm excited about what God is doing. What a tremendous day yesterday in the house of the Lord. Amen. A great day across the network. Amen. I give honor to our pastor tonight. Him and Sister Melinda have made their way. Amen. In route to the campground or there already in Tioga to be with our senior campers this week. Amen. And believe to my knowledge, Bishop Marcelli is there as the principal. Amen. But God is doing great things. A great day yesterday. Amen. If you were not here with us as a father, we say a belated Father's Day to you from the Pentecostals of Lee Road. And we want to say welcome to all of our guests. If there's a guest in the house, especially if you're a first-time guest, we welcome you to the house of the Lord on Highway 40. But we do not apologize for being apostolic. We don't apologize for what takes place in this building. Amen. And what's going to take place outside of this building because what happens here is going to be going, begin to go home going to begin to happen on highway 40 and highway 437 and different roads different houses different addresses as god begins to turn this parish and tri-parish area upside down amen and we are so honored tonight as i said earlier to have brother greg all britain back with us amen we believe as a pastoral staff and along with our pastor pastor paul that he is in a, the vein of the holy ghost and we're in a season of revival and revival is not always numerical Sometimes revival is for the body, a reviving of the body. And I believe that is strongly happening here at the Pentecostal of Lee Road. A few announcements for you tonight, and in their absence, I know he'll probably see this, but he knows it's coming. Uh, July is Pastor Paul and Sister Melinda's birthday. You should have received emails uh, and maybe a text message to this effect. If you are not on the church email list or text message, please uh, sign up for that. You can call the church office or see the information booth uh, and sign up for those that you can be notified and get our PLR weekly, which notifies you of a lot of things. Uh, but this is one announcement that if he sees it, he scratches it. So when that he didn't, uh, he's not here tonight, we can make this announcement. Uh, July is Pastor Paul and Sister Melinda's birthday, and we'll be presenting them a gift at our multi-campus service together with Mandeville and LaRanger. Uh, at that time so if you would please just mark it on the in an envelope mark pastor's birthday or uh trinicost birthday and either uh, give it to myself or one of the pastoral staff or slip it under the office door there or place it in the offering basket and we'd be sure that they will be blessed by that also camp meeting july 4th through the 7th in tioga louisiana if you'd like to stay in our network dorms please complete the dorm packet from the welcome center and turn it in by this coming sunday june 25th to the plr office and please remember that is the network dorm, so there's uh, beds are going quickly. If you would like to stay in our dorms, please fill out a packet. Don't wait till the day before, because there may not be room at that point. The next multi-campus service in two weeks will be Sunday, July 2nd. One service at 10 a.m. here at PLR, 
And our guest speaker will be none other than Reverend J.H. Osborne. Amen. He is a pastor in the ALJC. Uh, all our men that have been to men's conference, he is a tremendous, tremendous, tremendous man of God. And you will not be disappointed uh, by his ministry. He will bless you with the word of God. And uh, if nothing else, he will bless you with his uh, oratorability, his, 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 his communication skills are above well above par um, he, he's worth the uh, though there's not a price of admission he would be worth the price of admission uh, to hear that man speak um, so come on July 2nd we know that's a holiday weekend but if you have not already done so booking out of town make sure you are here for July 2nd and so we only have that one 10 a.m. service uh, Brother Greg Albritton, as I said, we're glad to have him. He will be back with us next weekend, Sunday and Monday, and we're so honored to have him with us. Amen. Our kids, ages six and up, can be dismissed to their classes uh, during the offering, and so if you would stand at this time, it's an honor and a privilege uh, for us to give into the kingdom of God, and it's a blessing. You can never outgive God. Um, I had a had an appointment today, a business appointment, and I'll share with you briefly. All of you know the, the quick medical history on me. And I began to talk to the young man about, about my seizure, and, and he just had this all look on his face. He was sitting there with his dad, and I kind of thought it odd that him and his dad were there. And, uh, you know, it was one of those, you know, where you, you have Richard so-and-so, and so he's Richie. That way he's not Richard Jr., uh, and the young man just began to look at me with this awestruck look on his face. And I paused for a minute, and he began to tell me that at, at him at the age of five, began to have seizures in the excess of 45 to 50 seizures a, a month. And now, because I told him, I said, I didn't drive for six months, and that was a killer. He looked at me, and he said, you ought to try to go to college and have to ride a bike and not get your driver's license till you're 30 because you couldn't, you had to be seizure-free for six months to get a driver's license he said and I'm now 40 and I have periods that I can't have a driver's license so I stand here tonight blessed knowing that whatever whatever monetary means I give back to the kingdom of God I can never outgive God I shared about an hour and a half with that man it was supposed to be a business meeting um, and we had about five minutes of business um, so yeah you, you have no idea brother Greg that in all transparency, Brother Wilkes struggles in that area. I can talk to you about a lot of things, but we connected today. Um, we connected, um, me and that young man and his father. And so, but we could never outgive God. And I stood here and he struck me. He said, how do you know that, that you'll never have another? I said, well, here's what I do know. I said, I know the man upstairs. He said, how do you know him? I said, because I've been to an altar and I've got on my knees and I've been to a watery grave where he washed my sins away. And I looked over at his dad and his dad's probably pushing 60 and his dad was pulling tears out from under his glasses. I don't know what it's going to develop into, but it's going to happen. So today I say you can't outgive God. You can't outgive him. So share your story with somebody. Give God an opportunity. Um, so with that, I know that's, a, that's not even really an offering, but offer yourself. Man, I'm telling you. Brother Jathan, I was so pumped up. I was supposed to be there an hour. I was at that PJ's almost two and a half hours, bro. I didn't want them to leave. I'd have baptized them in PJ's if they'd have had some water. You just don't know. But if you have your offering tonight before I get in trouble, you have your offering tonight and hold it up toward the Lord. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your precious people. God, I thank you for the appointment today that by my job, you made a way of means of connection with Richie. And I pray, God, that more will come. We can't outgive you. And today I stand here blessed because of your goodness. I pray your favor upon this precious people and their giving and upon their homes and upon their jobs. And everyone said amen. You may march from the back to the front as our custom here at Lee Road.
honor tonight. I know we've been up and down a little bit, but I'm going to ask you to stand. I believe the man's worthy of that. Amen. He's no, no stranger to this pulpit. And um, we were blessed yesterday to have him in our home. And um, we had a good time of, of fellowship. But uh, I'm honored today to, to, bring to, this, to bring to this pulpit a, a friend of mine. But more than that, to bring to this pulpit a man of God that I know. I said it the first time, and I'll say it again. I know is prepared. He's prepared himself. Come, Brother Bre Greg Albritton, and bring us the word of the Lord. What thus saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Turn to two or three people and smile. Speak a blessing. Speak a word of blessing and strength to them. Amen. Would you do that in the house of the Lord? Speak blessing. Pray the anointing of the Lord upon them. Speak the favor of God into their life and into their time in the Lord in this service tonight. Praise God. Praise God. It's so good to see everybody on this Monday night. What a tremendous time we had in the word of the Lord and presence of the Lord yesterday. And um, just honored. I'm saying it almost every time I'm in the pulpit. But so honored to be with you all and to be experiencing this time of ministry and revival together. I never want to take it for granted, the privilege and the blessing to be with God's people and to minister uh, the word of the Lord and to walk in the presence and the spirit of Almighty God. Praise God. I give honor to Brother Wilkes. What a tremendous job leading us in worship and faith tonight, speaking faith. I thank God for him. I was privileged to be, uh, not sure which direction he went, but was privileged to be, well, there you are. Amen. Privileged to be in their home yesterday, and Sister Lisa cooked just a tremendous meal, and we had a great time of, of visiting and, and, and just talking about life and things of God at their home, and then uh, transitioned about 3.30 to um, Sam and Tabby's house where uh, the whole tribe of Paraloos were gathered together, and the in-laws and the outlaws, and we got to telling stories and having fun. Uh, Deborah may or may not have at some point entered the swimming pool at the effort of a few of her brothers. And uh, then we, me and Jathan kind of led the way, got to telling old stories. And y'all just should have been there. That's all I'm going to tell you. We, we had some good times, some, some old Lee Road stories that, uh, goodness, 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 just some, why does, and, and now we told a hundred stories, but I don't, how many of you, just to see if anybody has good memory. How many of y'all remember the night that I messed up reading my text or I told some funny story and we all got to laughing and I never pulled it back? Look at the hands across this room. A preacher could preach 100 good messages, but you let something like that happen, it'll never be forgotten. And it's all right. We had good times laughing and uh, spending time together. And, and then a week or two ago, Brother Greg and Sister Nikki had us in their home and just the hospitality and the food and fellowship and friendship is just, just refreshing my soul and, and, and then the times in the presence of the Lord. Sundays have been awesome. There's just been something incredible about our Monday nights together and I'm excited again to see what God is going to do in this house tonight. I, I felt to ask us, and I know we've worshiped and praised God, but I felt to ask us just to take a moment, and if you got your Bibles, I know you're ready for me to read my text, but if you can set your Bibles down or hold it with one hand, and could we just praise the Lord and, and, and put our minds and our hearts in his presence for just 60 seconds, 90 seconds, just a minute or so, Lord, in Jesus' name. We give you blessing on this Monday night, Jesus. We give you honor. Amen. Lord, we lift you up. We've already entered your gates with thanksgiving and your courts with praise. And we're believing, Lord Jesus, has been spoken for liberty and supernatural to unfold in this room and the healing, lifting oil of Jesus Christ to flow in every pew. We praise you, Jesus. We honor you, Jesus. We magnify you, Jesus, and we exalt you and lift up your name. You're a holy God. You're a great God. You're our God, and we thank you, Lord, for walking with us and 
ministering to us so often, Jesus. We thank you. We worship you and serve you. Praise God. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 26. I want us to look at one verse of this story for our text, and then we will look into this chapter in our message tonight. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 26. The Bible says this, and on the fourth day, which lets you know something serious has happened the last three days, or we will look into what happened over their last three days. But it says, and on the fourth day, they assembled themselves in the valley of Baraka, for there they blessed the Lord. Therefore, the name of the same place was called the valley of Baraka unto this day. They gathered in a valley, and they blessed the Lord, and they named the valley, the valley of Baraka. Anybody know what Baraka means? If you looked it up in another version, or if you looked it up in in a concordance, it simply means blessing. So they named their valley, the valley of blessing. I want to minister on that subject for a few moments tonight and believe that the Lord will lead and minister in a beautiful way. God bless, and you may be seated. Turn to your neighbor and say, the valley of blessing. Now, here's what I want you to look back and tell them again. Tell them this. Don't name your valley just yet. Would you say something along those lines? Don't say, hey, shake them a little bit if you need to. Say, say, don't name your valley just yet. I want us to look into this story, and we're going to go verse by verse, and I'll tell you in advance, it's 29 verses. So if I'm at an hour and a half and we're still on verse 13, we're in a whole lot of trouble. It's not going to happen. Well, it might, but, but I don't plan on that happening. We'll move quickly through this story, but I want you to go back with me. If you have your Bibles, you can just leave them open in your laps and we'll follow along. The media ministry will on the screen as well. Let's go back and just walk through this story. It came to pass after this also that the children of Moab, the children of Ammon, with them other beside the Ammonites, so it's several groups that have bound together to to come against. Notice what it says. They came against Jehoshaphat, to battle. Then there came some and told Jehoshaphat, saying, see, we're already in verse 2. Somebody turn to your neighbor and say, there's hope. We can be home before 10. Then there came some and told Jehoshaphat, saying, there cometh a multitude against you. Somebody say a multitude. This is several groups that have come together to attack Jehoshaphat. So they said, there cometh against thee a multitude from beyond the sea on this side Syria. Behold, there in Hazazon Tamar, which is in Gedi. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord, proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. Notice the first words of that verse. When he found out a multitude was coming against him, the Bible said, Jehoshaphat feared. He was afraid. I I don't believe it's a sin or wrong to admit fear when it comes into our lives. No, I don't have any intention of living in a spirit of fear. I have no intention of allowing the enemy to put upon me a cloak of fear that intimidates our lives or my life. But there are times when stuff, things, can, happenings can unfold at such a powerful rate that momentarily fear can come into our life. I do not believe, I believe it's just being honest. I mean, the Bible even tells us that the apostles, when Jesus fell asleep in the back of the boat and the storm rose, so these men were fishermen. They were in the boats all the time. But on this day, the Bible said the water came in so fast, the word says they were in jeopardy. 
I don't believe that was computer graphic inspired. I, I, I don't think that was fake water. It's just not, I believe that was real water and they were really afraid and they were really in jeopardy and that's why they began to shake Jesus awake. Sometimes we've just got to be honest. Things are ganged up or the situation seems overwhelming or the circumstance seems pretty heavy. So Jehoshaphat feared. It's not if you ever or, or never, if you ever feel fear, the issue is what are you going to do when the water gets in your boat? What are you going to do when fear comes into your life? Well, he very quickly, this story lets us know that he, he made a very solid godly decision. He set himself to seek the Lord. Somebody stamp it down in your life right now. The next time fear comes in my story, I'm going to immediately set my sails to seek God. I'm going to set my spiritual focus on seeking God. He proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. Verse 4, Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. They, their, their prayer was simple. They were just asking for help. Now, anytime I read a verse or make a statement that talks about asking God for help, I can't help it. I probably just grinned if I did and my spirit grinned because in my early 20s, I made a commitment that I was going to go to the prayer room before church services and, and I like to, so I wouldn't get out and lose focus and I like to talk a lot, but I have to be careful. So I would stay in the prayer room until the first song started playing and I would walk to my spot on the front row. So that was my commitment. And the prayer room would usually empty out a few minutes before church and, and I'd have it to myself. But sometimes this one man stayed and, uh, he had, let me just say this nicely, God had delivered him from drugs, but I think he still had a, a few of the brain cells that had, had been affected. He, he was an interesting fellow and, and, and humorous at times, and, and I'm just having a little fun. He, he, he had a unique way of praying. One morning, early morning prayer meeting, I'm up there praying and just trying to stay awake and get a hold of God, and all of a sudden I heard, uh, I heard something, and I, and I looked, and he was marching military style across the back, and he would stop, and he was saying, I salute you, sir. You are my commander-in-chief, sir, and and that was how he was doing his prayer meeting. He was letting God know, I follow orders and uh, I'm at your service. And, 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 and But one night on Sunday night, it was just me and him left in the prayer room. And he had such a pure spirit. He was crying. He was crying out to God. And then he said, and it was just me and him left in the prayer room. He said, Jesus, I need your help. That's H-E-L-P. Help! And I'm sorry, but I got to laughing a little bit because I, 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 I didn't know the Lord had trouble spelling words when he created language. and oh, uh, He needed help! Any of y'all don't confess if you ever help God spell. But they got together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities that came. Verse 5. Jehoshaphat, as they gathered together, he stood in the congregation in the house of the Lord. And verse 6 through verse 12, you read in commentaries, I read some again today, looking, just studying through this chapter. Verse 6 through 12 is considered one of the most powerful, well-stated, eloquent prayers in the entire Bible. He is just beautiful. Here is a man whose nation is under attack. You get the picture that they're outnumbered. You get the picture that the other army has more firepower to, than, than, than Judah and Jehoshaphat. You get the impression that it's not a good situation at all. Let's just walk quickly through his prayer. O oh Lord God of our fathers, art not thou God in heaven and rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen. Now this is important. There were a lot of uh, locales that had their own God and they were okay with our community having our God and your community having your God and your nation having your God. But this man is establishing, you're the God over all the nations. You're the God over all the kingdoms. We're serving the one true God. 
Amen. We know that we serve the great God, the one true, the almighty God. And he said, and in thy hand is there not power and might, none able to withstand thee, art not thou our God. You drove out the inhabitants of this land before thy people. You gave it to Abraham forever, and they dwelt therein. This group of people, amen, your people have dwelt therein, built a sanctuary for you, amen. And, and we say, verse 9, when evil cometh upon us, or sword, or judgment, or pestilence, or famines, we stand in the house of God, we get in your presence, and we, we know your name is headquartered here, folks. That's a, lot of good, that's a lot of good word right there. In God's house is his presence. In God's house is his name, amen. And, and, and it's a good thing. I know the house of the Lord is not the same as the temple in the Old Testament but I'm thankful for God's house a place I can come in any season of my life where his presence, amen, where his presence dwells, where his name dwells, amen as Brother Wilkes has spoken to us tonight God's liberty and healing and anointing is, is in this house two or three are gathered together as Brother Jathan spoke to me during worship touched my heart, he's being a good daddy with a baby in one arm and the other arm about touching the lights up there he was worshiping God and praising God. And I, I walking around while we were worshiping, he said, man, something's here tonight. Hey, Amen. it's here. He's here. The pre I'm glad for the house of God where we can go, where his presence is. His name is there. And, and Jehoshaphat, notice what he said. In my affliction, you will hear and you will help. This is in his prayer. Now, notice what he says. Behold. The children of Ammon, Moab, Mount Seir, whom they, you would not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and destroyed them not. He's saying, Lord, we obeyed you. We did not attack this people when we were on our journey of deliverance. Behold, look how they reward us. They're come to try to cast us out of thy possession which thou hast given us to inherit. In other words, we obeyed God and did what you led us to do, and now because we didn't destroy them, look how they're returning the favor. They're going to try to wipe us out. I, I want to tell somebody, you've obeyed the Lord. You follow the Lord. I think it's okay for you to say, God, I've obeyed you. God, I've done everything I've known to do in our journey. I've just been following you. Now, God, the enemy's circling around and trying to wipe me out. I, I don't think you need to let him do that, amen, because I'm your child. I've been walking in your pathways. I think that's okay to say. And so, so, so he, he's praying this prayer and said, Lord, look, look, we didn't destroy them and they're going to try to wipe us out and we're living in the inheritance that you've given us. Now, I love verse 12. I absolutely love verse 12. Oh, our God, will thou not judge them? For we have no might. He didn't say a little might. He said we have no might against this great company that cometh against us, neither know we what to do. Now that by itself sounds overwhelming. How would you feel if you were on a ball team or you were in an army and your coach or your general came in and met you and said, I, guys, I hate to tell you, we have no chance, none. I mean, you want to go out for the second half? <laughs> if that's the halftime speech, we have no might. We have no power. We just can't get it done. We don't, matter of fact, they're paying me a, a million, two million a year to be your coach, but I don't have a clue what to do. I'm not talking about Les Miles playing Alabama, I promise. Some of y'all get that. I don't know what to do. But this last statement, there's been seasons in my life, folks, where I've lived on this last statement. There have been seasons in my life. I remember one time in, at the Pentecostals of Alexandria years ago before we went to Colorado and pastored. My wife was home sick with one of our children. We had two at the time, and I was in the balcony with another child, tears dripping off my chin while Pastor Anthony preached. And every, it felt like every other person could have left that building because God had a word for me that night. Amen. And I remember, amen, I may not 
not know what to do. We're in a season of pressure and stress. We're in a season, amen. But I, I do, I, I know what to do. My eyes are on the Lord. Can I preach a little bit here right now? You may be at times in a season where you don't know what to do. But if you can look to Jesus, then I say you do know what to do. In the same verse, he said we don't know what to do. He showed he knew exactly what to do. I will seek the Lord. I will turn my eyes to Almighty God. I will look unto the power of my God who sits on the throne. I'm talking to somebody tonight in the Holy Ghost. Put your eyes on Jesus. Put your eyes on Jesus. Put your eyes on Jesus. You do know what to do. You do know what to do. Our eyes are on you. Verse 13. They're all standing before the Lord. Their little ones, their wives, their children. That's such a beautiful picture. Revival. I was thinking about this this afternoon. Revival affects the entire family apostolic move of God. I look down here tonight. I don't know all their names, but I looked down at five or six young young girls and I said, that's the most beautiful worship team. They were up here grinning and smiling. I've seen moves of God in churches on a Sunday service where children keyed the entire move of God. I've seen it happen. Amen. I believe it hits the young people, the young adults, all the way through to the elders and young couples and, and all points in between. This is a beautiful picture. We've got an enemy that's standing against us that we feel under attack but we're all seeking God, leaning to God, calling on the name of the Lord. Now notice verse 14. They've been fasting. They've been praying. Their leaders led them in prayer. They're seeking, standing, seeking God and standing before God. And I love what begins to happen in this story. Upon Jehaziel, and I'm not gonna give I'm not gonna give all the genealogy, but if you just read it, upon Jehaziel came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. Hearken, and he began to speak. Hearken ye, all of Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord. Am I talking to anybody in this room? that you can remember your life or family was in a bind or a challenging situation and you can tell me I can mark the moment the presence of God came in the room. I can mark the moment the spirit of God settled into the camp. Anybody? I can tell you story after story. I remember one in a hospital room where the doctors wasn't giving me real good news and everybody left and that night I was there with just my sister and she was reading the word of God and God led her to read a certain set of verses and while she read that, all the anxiety, all the fear left that room as the presence of God. Now I still had to face surgery. I still had to face some other things but the presence of God settled in that room and anointing and a power of God. I'm talking to somebody let the spirit of God come into the camp and everything's going to be all right. So the spirit of God settled and the prophecy began to speak at the end of verse 15. Be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude for the battle is not yours but God's. Be not afraid nor dismayed. Don't let the multitude shake you up. Don't let the numbers that they have greater numbers than you, more firepower, don't let that shake you up. Here's what we have to understand is the word from God. The battle is not yours, but God. Somebody say that's a word from God. Somebody say that's a promise from the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They received that promise from Almighty God. I'm putting a little word on you tonight. Turn to your neighbor and say, he's putting the word on us tonight. The Spirit of God is going to move beautifully in this room. Right now, we're putting the word on you for a few moments. Battle. Don't be afraid. What did God address? The first thing Jehoshaphat began to feel was fear. 
Don't be afraid nor dismayed. Hallelujah. The battle is not yours but God's. Verse 16, long before GPSs were invented, God knew exactly where the enemy was going to focus the attack. And God said, go down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz, and you shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. God said, I'm giving you the coordinates. This is exactly where I want you to go show up. Verse 17, you shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves. Stand ye still. See the salvation of the Lord with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. Here's something I find very interesting. The Lord told them, you're not going to need to fight in this battle. Right? Is that what the Bible said? Now, you would think, just our natural logic, that if, if God was going to do all the fighting, then we can just sleep in in the morning. You would think, don't get ahead of my message. You would think they could just stay in the next day and God would go out there and wipe out the enemy. I'm in the Holy Ghost right now. Somebody understand what the Lord was telling them. Amen. The Lord spoke to them and said, you're not going to fight. Matter of fact, set yourselves, and I believe this next statement is talking in their spirit. Stand still. Trust me. You're going to see the salvation of the Lord. Now, tomorrow, go out against them. Now, Lord, why do you need me to go out and line up, face the enemy if you're going to do the fighting. And I believe that God would say back to you, I need you to show up. I need you to bring my presence to the front lines of the battle. I need you as the embodiment and temple of the Holy Ghost to be on the front lines and face that enemy down and say, all that you've brought against me doesn't intimidate me. God is on my side. If I can tag into yesterday a little bit. Amen. I believe God said, I need you to operate your faith and show up. I need you to go out and, and show your faith and your belief and bring my presence to the front lines and bring my presence to the face of the enemy. But can I maybe get a tad bit ahead of myself and tell you, amen, I have a little line I like to say right along here, amen, in my brain when I'm reading through this scripture, and that is this, if I will show up, then my God's gonna bow up. Hallelujah. If I will just show up and I will, amen, keep coming to the house of God even when I'm hurting, and I'm gonna keep being faithful even when I'm in a battle, and I'm going to keep going to the prayer room to the house of God, my God. I, the anointing is in this house let me just let me just let me just talk for a minute here I'm going to keep paying my tithes and giving offerings even when my finances are on lockdown. Uh huh. I'm going to keep going to the front lines trusting in Jesus. I'm going to bring my family to house even when a lot of sickness is coming against us and it would be... I, I'm going to worship even when I'm hurting. I'm going to be faithful even when it's a battle or a valley. Why? Because God is going to fight for me, but I still have to show up. Uh, I'm still going to walk in the midst of my enemy and say, amen, God is on my side. Amen. Show their faith. And God asked them to go out against the enemy. And he said, when you get there, God will be with you. Verse 18, Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. Now please remember, this is all happening in the camp. The enemy still has them outnumbered. 
The enemy's still just across the valley. The enemy still has them outnumbered, overwhelmed, and outgunned. But a word of God is coming to the camp. And on the word of God alone, they worshiped. And then after they worshiped, they stood up and did what in the next verse? The Bible says they stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. I'm only going to be just a, a few more minutes. But in the room this afternoon, I felt to, to, to encourage somebody. Am I talking to anybody that you, your circumstances may have not fully changed yet? The situation may not have fully shifted where you see the answers or the fulfillment of some things in your life, but you know God's presence came into the camp. Brother Albright, and I can just tell you, God's presence came into my prayer room. God's presence came. Amen. This, this is, this is going to be a word and a move of God for somebody in this message right now. Hallelujah. You know, uh, you, you can send the spies to look, and the enemy is still there, and not one of the enemy hadn't gone anywhere. The circumstances or the facts haven't changed but you know brother Albright and God came into the camp I know I received a word from the Lord I know it was a word from God I know I have some promises in my spirit I'm talking to some precious men and ladies of God you are cradling some promises you may still look out the window and see storm clouds rolling but you're cradling some promises you may still look out and see the Ammonites and the Moabites and they look like they're ready for war first thing in the morning but you know God's spirit has spoken to your soul and you know you know you've got a word you know you am I talking to anybody who's got some promises you're cradling in your spirit you've got some words from God but, but it seems like circumstance hadn't changed yet I've got a, a message for you on this Monday night amen and this is just simply relaying the message that they taught us what is that when they have a word and the, the fulfillment hadn't come yet you know what they did brother revere they worshiped with their word and they praised with their promise they didn't wait for the deliverance to worship they didn't wait for the breakthrough to dance they didn't wait for the fulfillment of the promise to praise God they said the enemy may still be out there but God just came in the camp God just gave me a word they fell down and began to say God God, we worship you. Thank you for that word. I'm going to worship with my word. Uh, they, they then stood up and they began to praise with their promise. They began to praise. I'm talking. Mm. Now, what's human nature, Sister Plouffe? When we look out the window and still see the storm, or we, we get on the porch and we still see the enemy lined up. You know, you know what our, our tendency is, Sister Rhonda? Our tendency is to worry even though we got a word. And none of y'all do this, but all Britain does this. I'll pout even though I have a promise. I tricked y'all. Some people will worry with their word and pout even though they got a promise because of what they still see but these people taught us when you get a word you start worshiping God because of the word that has come and you begin to praise God because that promise has come into your life so I speak to somebody in the Holy Ghost that's between promise and fulfillment that's between word and breakthrough keep on worshiping your Savior keep on praising Jesus Christ keep on believing keep on believing keep on believing Hallelujah. 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 Hakaya Rababa Shandataya. Let's just do that for a moment. The Holy Ghost is in this room. Would somebody just pray and cry out right now? Let some prayer come out right now in Jesus' holy name. There's going to be a powerful flow. A beautiful channel of the Holy Ghost is going to be let loose in this room tonight. A beautiful, a beautiful flow of Holy Spirit is going to come into this house tonight. Ikanda ya raba baba baba shanda taya. Ikanda ya shate ya. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus.
in the name of Jesus. Now imagine with me for just a moment. Brother Gary Nixon, just imagine with me for a moment if the enemy has spies and on the night before they have you outnumbered and overwhelmed and they know they're attacking at daylight and their spies up in a tree with, with night vision goggles and he sees people dancing with tambourines and sees hands lifted up so and our God is an awesome. That song was on my mind all day. God's going to show his awesomeness. I know it's an old song, but he's going to show his awesomeness in somebody's life tonight. And they look into your camp and people's on their face and then they stand up and just begin, our God, ah, we worship the Lord. What do you think that spy brings back to his camp? He said, they should be crying. We should see knees knocking. We should see terror and panic. Instead, those people look like something good is going on. What's the matter? Do, uh, I could just see the spy going back to their camp saying, what's the matter? Do they, do they have a secret weapon we don't know about? Uh-huh. <laughs> We sure do. It's our God. He's on the throne. Our God is, is, is mighty in battle. So, so let's, let's move on. They rose up early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. Now this is putting legs on their faith. It's one thing to worship with a word and praise with a promise. Now they're having to walk it out. They, they went into the wilderness of Tekoa, and as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Here, amen, you believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe his prophets. You will prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord that should praise the beauty of holiness. Now, I want to get finished, but I want us to just consider this. Just when he had consulted with the people, I wondered today, Brother Wilkes, was he saying, now, guys, I'm going to put the praise and worship team on the front lines, and we really believe in God's going to bless us. But if he don't, it's not going to be good for whoever's on the front lines. So who wants to sing today? <laughs> who, who signs up for the, I mean, I mean, you know, you are very organized, and, 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 and you know, the schedules work. We know who's going to play the bass, who's going to play the drums. Gonna, and, and that stuff is good. But I wonder if you would schedule to do all that stuff if you knew. Well, if a miracle don't happen, this is not going to go real good for me. He consulted with the people. But somebody must have volunteered and said, I'll sing today, Pastor. <laughs> I, I'm ready to worship today. I'll put me on that front line because I just believe my God is about to do something great. So when they consulted with them, they, they began to, to look what happens in verse 21. He appointed singers. Somebody say singers. That should praise the beauty of holiness. And they went out before the army to praise the Lord and for sing for his mercy endureth forever. This is what they're saying. This is what the praisers are saying. Praise the Lord. His mercy endureth forever. Somebody say, when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments. Now, you study that word ambushments, it's a very unique word, and one commentator said this. He said it could also be interpreted ambushers. Many of the commentaries believe that God sent angels as supernatural special agents just to get up in the midst of that enemy and cause all kind of commotion and all kind of confusion. I believe God can send special agents in the spirit realm as they began to worship and as they began to praise God sent angels. God sent ambushments against Ammon, Moab, Mount Seir, and they were smitten. For the children of Ammon, Moab, stood up against the children of Mount They turned on themselves. They began to slay and destroy one another. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped destroy one another. Can I tell somebody? We talked about it yesterday. God is on your side. God will help fight your battles. When God, when you show up and God bows up, the enemy doesn't have a chance. I'm going to say it one more time. Keep showing up. Keep worshiping in faith. Keep praising and believing in faith. Amen. Keep bringing yourself to the front lines of the circumstance because God is going to do something mighty in your life. Verse 24, when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked 
at that multitude that had overwhelmed them and brought fear to the beginning of the story. Now, when they look at the multitude, there are dead bodies falling to the earth, none escaped. And when Jehoshaphat, now I'm telling a story tonight from the Old Testament, but in reality, I'm telling a story of many of your lives. I'm telling a story of things that happen in our walk with God and in our journey. So please understand the imagery and the connection to your story and to your life and to your situation. Please pay close attention to these next few verses. When Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil of them, they found among them in abundance both riches with the dead bodies, precious jewels. Now this is, this is pretty rough. Ancient civilization, old time warfare, and now they're reaping the spoils. But when they found all the dead bodies, they found riches, precious jewels. They stripped off for themselves more than they could carry away. They were three days in gathering the spoil. I don't know if God said it this way, but I imagine the Lord saying, guys, y'all been through it. They overwhelmed you and came against you and outnumbered you and outgunned you, but you put your trust in me. Now I've brought you tremendous victory. I'm going to send you on an all-expense-paid three-day shopping trip. Do y'all think God may have said it like that? Mm, I don't know if God said it just like that, but it took how many days? Three days where they gathered riches. They gathered jewels they gathered the spoils. What are you preaching to us on this Monday night, Brother Albritton? I'm saying don't name your valley when the enemy shows up. Don't name your valley when it seems like you're outnumbered. Don't name your valley when it seems like you're overwhelmed. Don't name your story or label your story when you're in the middle of a storm or the middle of a trial. Amen. Don't name your story yet. Don't label this is the day of the battle. This is the day I was outnumbered. This is the day that brokenness ruined me and this is the day that no, 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 no. I'm not going to label it just yet because when God gets finished, God's gonna bring blessing. God's gonna bring anointing. I've got about one or two more minutes to speak and we're gonna pray but somebody understand. Thank you for being faithful in the battle. Thank you for being faithful in the valley. Thank you for being faithful in the trial because when God gets through with it, he said, I'm gonna give you more than you entered this story with. Uh, I'm gonna give you blessing. I'm going to give you favor. I'm going to give you spiritual wealth. I'm going to give you riches. It took them three days to gather the spoil. God said the devil thought he was going to destroy you, but in turn I am going to bless you. Somebody hear the man of God on this Monday night what hell sent that he thought would destroy you. By the time God gets finished you're going to realize you have blessing. You have more strength you have things that God has put in your life and in your spirit. <laughs> keep standing. You can keep standing if you want to. Those that are standing, Isaiah 45, 3. Let's look at it real quick. I believe this is what the Spirit is doing in this time of revival. This is what the Spirit is doing in, in your lives. Look at this verse. He's already told him in one and two, I'm gonna make the crooked places straight. It's, it's that same scripture. Look what God said. I will give thee the treasures of what? Anybody ever been through a dark night you thought was gonna destroy you? God said, it ain't gonna destroy you. While the devil thinks you're in the dark night, I'm gonna give you treasures of darkness. I'm gonna give you hidden riches of secret places. And when it's all said and done, you're gonna know that I, the Lord, which call you by name, I'm the God of Israel. I am your God. Somebody, I speak it in the Holy Ghost in this room. Somebody on this night is gonna understand God's unloading treasures in your life. They they went on a three day shopping trip. God said, the valley doesn't win. The battle doesn't win. The devil doesn't win. The bad circumstances, it does not win. I will give you blessing. I will give you treasures. I will give you spiritual wealth. Beginning that story, they were afraid because it seemed like the enemy had them overwhelmed. But the end of that story, Let's go back to Second Chronicles. 
the end of that story, verse 25. Three days gathering what the Bible said was riches, precious jewels, more than they could take away. Now we get to our text. And on the fourth day, they gathered together. Now the writers obviously writing this in hindsight. We don't know what the name of this valley was before this day. But on this day, they gathered in this valley and they said, before we leave, we've got to bless our God who showed his power and showed his mercy and showed his grace and has blessed us by defeating the enemy and blessed us by putting so much into our life. Before we leave, we must bless the Lord. And the Bible says, therefore, the same place was called the Valley of Baraka or the Valley of Blessing unto this day. At the end of the story, they said, now we'll name our valley. Now we'll name this circumstance. Now I'll, I'll put something on. And it says it's named the valley of blessing, the valley of blessing all the way till today. And I've come to tell somebody on this Monday night, and they went home rejoicing. They went home blessing the name yeah. of God. If I interviewed some of you and went back one year, two years, five years, ten years, whatever you, you could mark, you, you would have enabled the season of that divorce or the season of the death of somebody that was sick in your life or the season your business collapse or Katrina or this or that. Or I, I can walk through the floods or wh whatever it was happened, whether in spirit or in life. That's, if you labeled it then, you may would label it. This, this was a season of brokenness or this was the season of this or this was the season of, of defeat. It may have seemed that way, but thank you for staying faithful. Thank you for walking with God. And I believe the Holy Ghost comes into this house to say, amen. I'm about to show you treasures. I'm about to show you spiritual blessing. I'm about to show you that the devil doesn't get the last laugh. You're going to be blessed beyond measure. And when you look back and you name this story and you label this story and you label this circumstance you will say it is the valley of blessing now before we come to the front and pray one thing I felt when I was at the hotel today and then in here today and I meant to say it before I started but how many this week I believe God has an absolute breakthrough coming for this church I believe there's coming a, a, a just a moment and time an absolute breakthrough breaking forth of the power and the spirit of God. How many this week, I know you walk with God and you pray and you fast and you seek God, but how many will specify a half a day or a day and will seek God through fasting this week for the upcoming revival weekend? How many will spend focused time in prayer and your prayer time, you will spend focused time praying over this revival. Those of you, if there's anybody that has access to the sanctuary, I just felt to ask this today. I want people this week, I'd love it if somebody would do it every day, come and lay hand on every chair in this building. I would love that. Amen. If you can have access or ministry team, help us. If folks can have access, come in, lay hands on the pulpit, lay hands on the platform, walk around and touch every door and say, God, however you do it, let your spirit, let angels stand at these doors. When people walk through, let them be coming into holy ground. Would you do that with me this week? Amen. Amen. Now I'd like to ask you just together with me at the front, let's come, come together from across this room. The name of Jesus. In 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 the name of Jesus. Put a lot of word on you tonight. I know that. But I felt to put an entire Bible story on us so somebody can understand. When God settles the situation. I will be more blessed than I entered into this story. Does anybody, I mean, I know that's simple, but does anybody, I will be more blessed than when I entered. And when I name or label 
Some of you may be saying, Brother Aubrey, and you don't know how tough it was or been. When I label the story, by the time my God gets through, I'm going to label it the blessing of Almighty God. Would you throw your hands to the heaven right now? Would somebody just let the spirit of Jesus Christ minister to you right now? Let the love and the anointing of the Lord flow in your life. Father, in Jesus' holy name, in Jesus' holy name, in Jesus' holy name, Lord, from the youngest to the eldest to all points in between, my Jesus, let your virtue flow in this house right now. I don't know what each individual may would label that valley. I don't know what each individual would label that battle. I don't know what they would look at and say, ooh, I, 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 put, a, I put a name on that was kind of doubt. I put a name on that that was fear. I put a name on that that was, was not real good. I'm going to rename my story. I'm going to let God rename. Would you keep your hands lifted in the air? right now. God's not finished fighting for you. God's not finished with your family. God's not finished with your home. God's not finished with your story. Some of you, God has brought so much restoration. He's going to keep restoring. He's going to keep building up. He's going to keep ministering. He's going to keep don't name that battle right now. Wait till God's finished with the story. Don't name that valley. Don't name that five or eight year season of your life. Don't do it. We're going to relabel some things in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. By the time you walk out of this valley, there's going to be so much wealth on you. By the time God, somebody let that release. Jesus told me to put the word on you tonight. Jesus told me to put the word on you. And his spirit was going to come into this room. Uh, don't label. Don't label it just yet. Let the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Come. Come on, my brother. Let power. Holy Ghost is in this house. Let power from the throne room come in this room right now. I speak it to your marriage. I speak it to your home life. I speak it to your walk with God. I speak it to your spirits. Let there be a restoration in the Holy Ghost on this night. Let there be a spiritual liberty in the Holy Ghost tonight. Let there be an anointing in the Holy Ghost tonight. Ha -ha. By the time you write the last chapter of this journal, it's going to say the valley of blessing. It may have been a valley, but God blessed me. It may have been a tough walk, but God blessed me. He blessed me greater than I even expected. He blessed me greater than I even thought possible. name in Jesus name come on my brother and my sister cry out to God we'll just be another five or ten minutes but the Holy Ghost is going to do something strong in this room Holy Ghost is going to do something powerful in this room. Holy Ghost is going to do something deep in this room in the next five or ten minutes as you cry out to God. Take that old label of defeat off of that story. Take that old label of defeat off of that. I'm not, I'm not labeling it defeat anymore. God, God. God is going he's going to un, he's going to unfold blessings he's going to release treasures and when you name this valley, you're going to name it the valley of blessing. You're going to name it the valley of blessing. You're going to say it was a dark night, but God gave me treasures. I'm richer than when I went in. I'm more blessed than when I went in. Somebody just let that cry come out. Somebody let that prayer come out right now. Holy Ghost is fighting for you. Holy Ghost is unfolding some spiritual treasure.
In the name of Jesus. 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 There's prophetic words about to be flowing in this altar among you. There's anointing oil flowing in this room right now. There's virtue flowing in this room right now. Just covenant with the Lord. Lord, the next five, eight, ten minutes, I'm just going to get lost in your presence. I'm going to let your spirit do everything it wants to do in my home, in my life, in our family. In the name of Jesus, 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 in the name of Jesus. Some of you are still praising with your promise and worshiping with your word. That's all right. You keep doing that. Holy Ghost is standing beside you. Fighting for you. You keep showing up. Watch your God do the work. In the name of Jesus. 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 God's not near about finished in this altar service, but please allow some instruction for just a moment if I can have your attention. Amen. Brother and sister, I don't know your name over here to my right, but would y'all come? God's got something strong for you tonight. Amen. Deborah, come. I, I need you to come in Jesus' name. Amen. Brother and sister, sister that led the singing, I need y'all to come. There's an anointing for you. Brother and sister, I'm sorry I don't know your names. There's virtue in this room. There's many others. I'm just grabbing a couple right now in Jesus' name. I need somebody to put their hands on these people's backs. Amen. I need somebody to put their hands on these people's backs. Brother Byers, amen. Brother Wilkes, would you come? I need you to, you keep praying over there, Brother Greg. That's perfect. Brother Wilkes, come get in front of these folks. Brother Jathan, sister Sarah, amen. Let God use you tonight. God has something for y'all too, but let God use you to pray for others. What you felt in that worship service, let it come. Somebody pray over brother and sister Nixon tonight. Pray absolute breakthrough anointing. That's above every name. In the name that's above every name. In Shonda Koraba Shata Tata Tabahaya. Ishanda Koraba Bashanda Tata Tabahaya. If the prophetic gift flows to you in this altar, you let it flow. If the ministry of faith flows for you in this altar, you let it flow on this night. Ikandaya Shanda Raba Baba Baba Bashanda Raba Bashata Tahaya. I said, Brother Jathan, let God use you. God knows their story. God knows right where they're at. Sarah, let God use you right now. There's anointing oil. There's virtue in this room. Hey, brother and sister Revere, come here before me, please. Come here, brother and sister Revere. In the name of Jesus Christ. Kyle, keep crying out to God. God, touch you and your bride right now. Father in Jesus' name. Father in Jesus' name. Father in Jesus' name. Father in Jesus' name. Ikanda koraba baba baba shanda to koraba baba baba shata haya. Ikanda yasha raba baba haya. I'm not labeling this story just yet. My God's not finished yet. When God finishes, I'm gonna call it blessing. When God finishes it, I'm gonna call it blessing. When God finishes it, it will be labeled blessing. Ikande Yashataha, that's it. Somebody help us pray. Kyle, Kyle. You and your, y'all come right now. Ikanda Koraba Baba 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 Church, help us pray. The gifts are released in this room. The anointing oil is released in this room. God, 
when God gets finished, it's going, we're going to see it. We're going to see the treasures released. We're going to see the blessing released. And we will name it the Valley of Blessing. Church, I release you to pray with one another. There's an anointing in this room right now. There's power in this room right now. God's unleashing things over people's heads. God's unleashing things over people's spirits. I need a couple people to pray with this lady right here in the orange and black. Somebody put your hand. Sheree, that's it. Just a couple people gather with her right here in Jesus' name. God is doing something. God is doing something in this house. God is doing something in this house. If there's anybody else, I didn't call your name yet. If I didn't call your name, but you got to have something from God, just come get close. When I name this story, it's going to be blessing. When God gets finished, it's going to be called blessing. When God gets finished. <laughs> Ministry team, let God use you. Let the gifts flow. Let anointing flow. Prayer people in this church, men and ladies in this church, let God use you right now. There's ministry oil in this house. Hallelujah. Come on, the waters are troubled right now. I, I believe the Lord gave me a word. He gave it to me for the filers over here, but it's for more than them. Uh, the Bible, Jesus is saying to us right now, uh, ask and you shall receive. Uh, knock and the door shall be opened. Uh, seek and you shall find. Uh, hallelujah. Someone needs to have some audacity right now uh, to ask, uh, hallelujah, what you've only thought. Uh, hallelujah, to knock uh, on a door that you've not dared to knock on before. Uh, the Lord would say to you tonight uh, to to increase your faith uh, for he is able to do exceeding uh, abundantly uh, above all you can ask uh, or even think uh, hallelujah hallelujah would you lift your voice uh, would you ask God uh, for your miracle uh, would you be plain uh, would you be explicit uh, would you tell the Lord uh, make your petition known to him right now Come on right now, it's not the time to think small things uh, or ask or pray small prayers. Uh, we can do that some other time. Uh, hallelujah, the favor of the Lord, uh, the eye of the Lord is upon you tonight. Uh, the favor of God uh, is upon you tonight. Uh, hallelujah, the Lord says ask. Uh, hallelujah, praise God. Uh, that thing that is welling up uh, within your heart, uh, that stirring uh, inside of you, uh, that 
vision you can make out in your mind's eye is not your imagination. Hallelujah, that is a vision from God. Now let it come out of your mouth. Hallelujah, ask in faith. Ask in faith. Nothing doubting. Ask in faith. Some of you might have to say, Lord, help my unbelief. Well, go ahead and say it. And then ask anyway. And then believe anyway. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. There is virtue that has been released into this house. If I didn't call you to the front, but you gotta have something from heaven, amen. Don't don't be ashamed just to come and stand. Don't be afraid to say, Brother Albright, I need that. I'm glad you're coming. In Jesus' name. Anybody else? You can get your break forth tonight. Holy Ghost. Yeah. Amen. I keep feeling it. Amen. There's prophecy in this room. I'm not speaking it just from me. If God gives you a word or you feel led to go put your hand on somebody's shoulder, let that happen in Jesus' name. If all it is is to pray in English, you pray over them. But I won't be surprised if God gives people a word tonight. If God gives people direction tonight. God gives people answers tonight. Hell, get your hands off. Amen. They're in God's hands. God will lead. God will guide. God will provide. God will direct. Hell, get your hands off. You don't even have permission to try to get a handle. Get your hands off. God works right now. God. Do your best work. Do your best work. 
Do your best work. Do your best work. By the time God gets finished, I will be labeling this the battle or the valley of blessing. I might have went through a dark night, but I'm coming out with some God treasures. You are coming out with some treasures. You hear me in the Holy Ghost. Brother Greg, you don't know the night has hurt so bad. The darkness has been so deep. How? But God said, I will give you treasures of darkness. That is your word. You, you will and are receiving treasures of blessing. Ikande ya shando toko shora baba ba shando toto ko shata haya. Ikande ya shando toto ko shata raba baba 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 shata haya. Ikande ya shando raba baba 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 shata haya. Ishate ya shando toho ya. Ikande ya shando raba baba baba haya. Ikande ya shando tata taka shata haya. Jesus. The name of Jesus. There's a couple sitting on the front row over there that could have been this way. Let's pray for them. Brother, sister, Hereford, I felt to pray for you. I need y'all to just come up here. You're praying great where you are. Come here. A couple of people's going to lay hands on you. God's doing something. I don't know. I don't know, but he knows. I need some precious folks. I need hands on their shoulders and hands on their backs. God knows what they're lifting to the throne room. God knows what they're lifting to the throne room. We're just walking in the Holy Ghost right now. God's doing something powerful in you. You feel that, don't you? Ikande ya shando toko shora ba 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 shato ra ba 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 haya. Ikande ya shete ya she ya te ya shando toto ko shata tahaya. That's it, Mandy. That's it. That's it. That's it. I'm not labeling the story just yet. Hallelujah. I'm going to let God work. And when God's finished, then we'll label this story. Then we'll name this season. Then we'll name this battle. I said, brother, sister, Hereford, let something flow right now. Hell, get your hands off. Hell, back up. The hand of the Lord. Ikate ya shando toko rabaha. Ikande ya shando toto kosho rababa shando toto kosha tahaya. Praise God, I feel something. 
Praise God. Those of you that are praying with the Herefords, keep doing that. But I feel a strong word of the Lord upon me right now. If you could look up here. If you, I believe the Lord is wanting to deliver some people from some generational struggles. Junk that is running your family for generations. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Stuff that you've battled with, that your family's battled with, that your family before them has battled with. I believe right now the Lord is going to set some people free from some old things, from some old struggles. Praise God. Amen. Every, every, every eye closed right now. If that is you, if you feel that there is something in your life that has been passed down that you've struggled with, I want you to raise your hands right now. Praise God. By the authority of the word of God and by the power of the name Jesus. Right now, dear God, I speak liberty. I speak freedom for the, for there to be a breaking loose, for this struggle to be put under the blood and broke forth from now and forevermore. Hallelujah. Would you praise the Lord for it right now? Hallelujah. Oh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, blood of Jesus, flow through this place right now, that crimson flood that's stronger than any hurt, that is stronger than any pain, that's stronger than any struggle, that's stronger than any sin, flow through this place, up and down every aisle, up and down this halter, Lord, bringing with it freedom and liberty and deliverance. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Would you worship the Lord? Would you praise him for it right now? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, somebody give God some praise right now. Somebody dance on the grave of your enemy right now. Hallelujah. Somebody let that praise well from a deeper part of you that you've not praised the Lord from in some time right now. Hallelujah. Come on. Somebody needs to let that old well, that old well that's been clogged up for a while begin to spring forth. Hallelujah. Come on. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Praise God for it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, we'll know. Amen. Anybody need a shift on their job? Amen. You need a shift on your job. If you need a shift on your job, raise your hand. I know Brother Dennis Shakowitz has been praying about that. That's been a special need. Amen. Raise your hand. If you need a shift on your job. First of all, you got to be faithful in your tithes and your offering. If you've been doing that, then you're set up for a miracle. These are faithful people. If you got your hand raised, now lift your other one. Heavenly Father, in this atmosphere, this is where manna comes down. This is where provision comes down. This is where they, it, it comes down, Lord, on, on the day before the Sabbath, the double comes down. Uh, I pray now, Lord, uh, let their resume begin to rise to the top of the stack. Um, give them favor in the interview. Give them favor in the time of promotion. Uh, I pray over your people, Lord. Uh, it's time that God's people move to the front. Uh, it's time that God's people step forward. Uh, I pray, Lord, in every situation, every hand that is raised uh, in a place of financial need uh, that have been faithful, God, I pray let heaven open and let heaven reward the faithfulness of your people. I speak an abundance of blessing. I speak abundance of, of financial miracle upon your people. In the name of Jesus, uh, release new jobs, uh, release new positions, 
Uh, Lord, and if it's not there, create it. Uh, create a way where there seemeth no way. Uh, for some of you, there doesn't even seem to be a way. God said, I'm going to create a way uh, where there doesn't seem to be a way. Uh, I'm speaking uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, I speak where there doesn't seem to be a way. God said, I'm going to make a way. Uh, God says, I'm going to create a way uh, for you to have it. Uh, I'm going to create a way uh, for it to happen in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 In the name of Jesus. Uh, sugar diabetes, in the name of Jesus, go. Go in the name of Jesus. Uh, sugar diabetes, high cholesterol, uh, go in the name of Jesus. Uh, things that begin to uh, just pester at the health, uh, things that pester at the health. Uh, I command it to go in the name of Jesus. Uh, thyroid issues. Uh, we have some saints of God that are, are weary by the time they get to the end of the week uh, because their health is out of balance. Uh, I command balance to come uh, into the health uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, some of you are weary in your body uh, because your health is out of balance. Uh, I command balance to come into your body uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Christ, uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, I speak balance into your health uh, by the authority of the word of God, uh, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord, hallelujah, the atmosphere is charged, uh, I know some of you will begin to leave, uh, and if you do, amen, Brother Wilkes will take the heat for this, we're going to pray in the sanctuary, this sanctuary, this Wednesday night. Amen. I know we're not going to dismiss yet, but if, if you do have to go, God bless you. We're going to pray. We normally pray next door. We're going to pray here Wednesday night because we're going to pray for every chair. We're going to pray for every door, every hallway. We're going to pray here on Wednesday night. So that means we need all of you. Usually there's about 60 or 70 on Wednesday night, but there's about 100 plus here. So we need all of you that can come back on Wednesday night for war on the floor at 630. Amen. We need you here to come. We're going to pray in the sanctuary here on Wednesday night. Believe in God for a mighty move of God on Sunday morning. Amen. The evangelist ask us. We believe he's flowing in the Holy Ghost. This kind of what's happening in our core body. What's happening in the core body. What's here on Monday night is the core body of the Pentecostal Road. I want this to spill over into Sunday morning. I want when our worship teams it takes, takes the platform on Sunday morning, I want this to spill over into our worship set where people begin to be touched and lives begin to be changed, uh, where all, brother, all Britain's got to do is begin to direct the altar service and things begin to happen and, and the Holy Ghost begin to move, uh, where the waters of baptism are troubled, uh, where not only the waters are troubled, but we got people that's got to get into a robe uh, because revelation comes. Uh, I pray revelation happen, where revelation of water baptism in Jesus' name, uh, where people are in field with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Uh, amen. We had someone receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost this past Sunday. We rejoice. Uh, with Brother Paul and Sister Sabrina Lipsky, their son received the baptism of the Holy Ghost this past Sunday. Amen. So invite somebody Sunday morning that, that you know may need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Invite them. But come Sunday expecting God to do the miraculous. Invite them. It doesn't matter what they have need of. It doesn't matter. He created it all. He can do it all. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. And if they say, man, I can't wait till Sunday, bring them Wednesday night. Bring them Wednesday night right here in the sanctuary. We'll pray for them on Wednesday night. We'll believe God. I don't know what's going to happen on Wednesday night. It might be a different war on the floor. Amen. It may start out with somebody like we normally close it. It might start out with somebody directing prayer. We might have baptisms and things on Wednesday night. Amen. Apostolic prayer on Wednesday night. We're going to pray here in the sanctuary. We normally pray next door. We're going to pray here. We're going to pray for every chair. We're going to pray for every carpet square. We're going we're gonna to do what the evangelists ask us to do, expecting God to do great things. Hey, hey, you know what? Here's what, here's what I believe. Here's what I, I, this is how charged I feel the atmosphere is. I believe that people can come in here on Sunday agreeing with the man of God that they, when they come in the door, they begin to sit in the atmosphere of his presence, that their lives will begin to unfold in his presence. Not in mine and your presence, but in his presence, their lives will begin to unfold and they'll realize the emptiness of their life. Not just the emptiness of their life, but realize that this is the place that it can be filled. I don't want them to just realize the emptiness and the brokenness, but realize this is where it can be filled and be fixed. This is where it can happen. This is where it can happen. Amen. Brother Rob. Amen. I do have a word of wisdom. 
I heard of one church, a brand new convert was up there praying on a Saturday like by themselves and and they found in the hallway in a closet or something, a box where like a whole case of anointing oil had come in and they got real excited and they just got to anointing everywhere in the church and they told pastor they were so excited and when the pastor and his wife went back in, there was oil stains on the brand new paint and oil stains on the carpet. So don't get so excited and, and just sling it everywhere. Amen. But here, here I do, I do ask the outer doors, the doors coming to the sanctuary. I, I mean, I just pray my own simple way. I say, God, if you got an angel standing at every door with their wings touching, people have to walk through angelic presence to get in this room. When they get here, what's supposed to be kept out is kept out. What's supposed to be brought in is, and the Holy Ghost has complete authority over the atmosphere. I'm believing it. Amen. I'm just believing God for this flow to continue and the absolute power, the anointing, pray liberty, pray that word liberty a lot. How many of you started feeling a fresh liberty in the house tonight? I sensed it when I walked in. Amen. Just keep praying that liberty. God is in control. God's power is is leading the journey. Lord, in Jesus' name, thank you for your visitation tonight. Thank you for meeting with us. Thank you, Lord, for the power of the word. Your word Man, your word spoke to us tonight in our lives and in our story, in our circumstances in 2017. Amen. That you will bless us with treasures, with spiritual riches, and you will bless us so that we will label any situation. By the time you get finished, we label it the blessing of God. Because you can turn all things to good. Could we lift our hands in this room and just give God thanksgiving and give God praise. Thank you for every prophetic word. Thank you for every deep healing in the Holy Ghost. Several receive that. Thank you for every bit of ministry of the oil of the Holy Ghost in this room. In Jesus' holy name. In Jesus' holy name. In Jesus' holy name. Mandy, that's right. Let's give him a hand clap of praise. That's good. That's good. You need anything? Hallelujah. Amen. Now, after a presence of the Lord like this, my pastor used to tell us, now, now, shake somebody's hand, hug somebody's neck. Let's, it should be a good bit of Jesus love in this room tonight. Let them know you love them, and you'll see them throughout this week in Jesus' name.